garage glad you're here we have a real treat this week we're going to take a field trip to virginia international raceway for the svra season finale grand prix and formula car festival it's a four-day event with test day on thursday practice on friday qualification and qualification races on saturday and feature races on sunday and throughout the weekend we plan to test the royale rp2 a little on thursday but we've entered the Lola T492 for the event. We plan to get plenty of in-car video, scenes from around the paddock, interviews with some of the other drivers, and lots of shots of racing action. So stay tuned, we have a full show today. Glad you're here. Our trip begins as we cross the James River on the Powhite Expressway, just west of Richmond, Virginia. Once we get this close to the track, we put the theme song to Vintage Garage on the CD player, put it on continuous play, and leave it running for the rest of the trip. We're heading south on Route 360, and when we cross the Dan River, we know we're getting close to South Boston. We just passed South Boston, and we're heading west on 58 toward Danville, Virginia. We're just a few minutes from the track. We turn left off 58, make a right onto this back road, and head toward the track. We see the sign for the track. The entrance is to the right. Registration is our first stop. There's a real short line, and the guys from Lotus Lane are just ahead of us in line. This is Kim Harmon. She's the registrar for SVRA. She does a great job. <laughs> Registration was sure smooth and easy, and the job Kim's doing is much appreciated. Now we'll head down into the paddock and choose a good spot. It's Wednesday night and we arrived safely at VIR. We got a great spot in the paddock right next to the Lotus Lane guys. We'll unload the Royale RP2 tonight, but we'll wait till first thing in the morning to set up the canopy and unload the Lola. It's now Thursday morning test day, and we're over at the Sasco Sports Rig. They brought two big trailers and trucks. They're going to mount a lot of tires this weekend. They sell Avon tires, Dunlop tires, and also Goodyear tires. Over here we find J.R. Mitchell and the crew from GMT Racing. They're setting up all their canopies. Normally we put the plastic tarp on our canopy while the frame is on the ground and then raise it up in one piece. But it's so windy today we don't dare do it. We started by putting up the frame and strapping it securely to both our trailer and the Lotus Lane trailer. Then we put up the canopy in the wind and we're sure it's not going to blow away and get out of control. It's now time for tech inspection. We're going to fire up the Lola, put all our gear in the car and drive on over for tech inspection. Well, we're now over at the tech shed, and Bob Williams is checking the cars. 
He does a great job with tech inspection. He has to know a lot about every kind of car. Jack Worley's now checking over the Camaro of Jack Cowell. Looking under the hood, looking at the engine, checking rules compliance. We have a few small items to fix on the Royale RP2. Now we're using the test day to shake down the car a little bit. This is one of the cars we'll race next season. And we just want to get a little bit of use out of the car this season and see what we need to fix. It's now Thursday evening and it's time for the start of the five lap driver orientation program feature race. We're at the starter stand just in time to see Chief Starter Lee Bradley start the DOP race. is the last event of the day. After the track closes, Einstein and I will walk the track and get ready for tomorrow's activities. It's now Friday morning and even colder than yesterday and there's a stiff wind from the north. It'll be a pretty blustery day today. Over in line waiting for tech inspection, we find the swift DB2 of Peter Gates. We'll try to interview him later in the weekend and learn more about the details of his car. In the paddock, we found this really interesting Time Mark III that belongs to Bob Deloge. Made in England, somewhat similar to a Malik in our opinion. May have run in the same class. We better get back to the Lola now and get ready to go on the track. We hear the track announcer call a group of four hours to the false grid. Before we go out on the track for our qualifying session, let's study a track map of VIR to get our bearings. After that, we'll suit up, get in the car, and head down to the hot pits. We'll try to make our fastest lap at VIR with you in the car. So I hope we don't crash. Stay tuned and see if we do. The VIR full course circuit is 3.27 miles in length and has 17 numbered turns and many unnumbered turns. Our hot lap will begin at the start finish line at the top of the map as we head toward turn one. Turns 1 through 5 form a tricky sequence of turns named Horseshoe, NASCAR Bend, and Left Hook. Turns 6 through 9 are essentially taken flat out and are called the Climbing S's. Turn 10, South Bend, leads to Oak Tree, the signature turn. The back straight runs from Oak Tree to the roller coaster at turn 14. Turns 14 through 17 form a tricky downhill sequence of turns ending in Hog Pen. Our lap will end when we return to the start-finish line. We're on our way to the hot pits, which is the entrance to the track for the qualifying sessions. When the grid marshals say it's okay, we enter the track and stay to the right of the blend line. We'll do a couple of practice laps to get our tires warm, and then we'll do a hot lap to get a good qualifying time. Our hot lap begins as we start up the front straight. The track rises slightly to crest at the start-finish line, and at the same time makes a bend to the right. After passing start-finish, we move left and then brake hard in the braking zone approaching turn one. Turns 1 and 2 form Horseshoe, a 180 degree turn to the right. That leads to turn 3, NASCAR Bend, a fast left-hander that tightens on exit. We accelerate hard down the short chute leading to turn 4, then brake and downshift to second for turn 4, left hook. We accelerate hard after turn 4, and shift to third between turns 5 and 5A. We're immediately in turn 6, a left-hander. Up ahead, we see the long climbing S's sequence before us. We shift to fourth before the VIR bridge and take the turn 7, 8, and 9 sequence flat out. The car gets light at turn 7, and that's the only tricky spot in the sequence. 
We quickly find ourselves at turn 10, South Bend, a very fast left-hander with a somewhat blind entrance. We break and downshift to second for turn 11, and downshift to first for turn 11A, Oak Tree, the signature hairpin right. We exit turn 11A in first, and run through the gears, accelerating as fast as we can down the back straight. There's a small rise about two-thirds down the straight, and the flag station on the left is station 12. After cresting the hill, the straight continues downhill and the car continues to accelerate. We break lightly and downshift to third for turn 14, the roller coaster, and then brake harder and shift to second for turn 14A, a slow right-hander. We accelerate hard down the hill through turns 15 and 16, both left-handers, and then think we're going too fast to make turns 17 and 17A, the hog pen. We usually brake before hog pen and then decide we took the turn too slowly. We accelerate back onto the front straight past the start finish line and that's where our hot lap will end. As we come in from our qualifying run, we see the cars for the Formula Junior and Formula V Friday afternoon feature race on the false grid. We'll change into our jeans and head over to the fence at turn three, NASCAR Bend. Near the end of the race, Dan Baker is running first in the Lotus 27 Formula Junior, followed by Phil Lamont in the Lotus 18, and Mark Primack in the Oscar T3. Right behind Marcus Jones in the Lotus 18 is past Matthew Primack, also in a Lotus 18. The real battle of the race is for first in Formula V, where Grand Reynolds is just barely holding off Mike Jackson. Right behind Red Jerts in the Zinc is followed by John Berries in the Ziedler and John Harkness in the Form Car. We're now over on the hill, right below the roller coaster and just above the hog pen for the Friday afternoon Mike Stott Payne Weber Enduro number no. one. It's a 60 minute race and it should be a lot of fun. After the racing was over on Friday, Dean Baker on the left from Belleville, Ontario, Canada threw a party for all the Monoposto racing teams. It was much appreciated. Joyce Reagan put out a big spread of food, while Jim Reagan barbecued chicken wings. It's now Saturday morning at BIR. Another cold front came through overnight, and the day is cold and crisp, with air temperatures in the high 30s. Larry Rossi in the Merlin and Will Thomas in the Brabham are just leaving the hot pits as we arrive to watch the Saturday morning Monoposto racing qualifying session. Dean Baker in the Caldwell. We'll head over to his paddock area and interview him when he comes in off the track. This is Dean Baker. We'll let him get his helmet off and then we'll ask him about his first impressions of the track. Well, what would you think about the track? <laughs> they said there were, what, 15 corners or something like that? There's about 37 corners out there. They're all over the place. It's fun. It's a fun track. Yeah, what's the toughest turn? Uh... A corner, that corner before the oak tree, the left-hander before the oak tree turn. Yeah, do you think you'll be taking that flat out? or? I don't think so. You don't think so? 
not if it stays this temperature. What about the uphill S's? Can you take them flat yet? Or? Yeah. Yeah, they're pretty easy flat. Yeah, yeah. You just, I, I, uh, I tried riding the curbs on a couple on one run. Uh -huh. and the car didn't like that. Got it all sideways and twisted and stuff. So stay off the curbs and just sort of yeah. weave your way through. It's nice. Well, how do you do it too wide though? It's pretty tough. Yeah, no, you, you, yeah. you can't do that. You can't do that. No, you got to hit it right. If you hit miss the first one, you're done for the rest. Yeah. So, it's got yeah, a nice rhythm though. Phil Lamont has also just come off the track. Let's talk to him and learn a little bit more about his car. This is a 1960 Lotus 18 Formula Junior. The Lotus 18 is a milestone car because it is the first rear engine Lotus that Colin Chapman and his crew designed. Uh, this engine is based on a Ford Anglia, but it's highly modified and produces about 105 to 110 horsepower. This car has drum brakes all around, uh, unlike some of the newer Formula Juniors. The Lotus 18 has an interesting uh, rear suspension design. Colin Chapman used the drive shaft itself as the upper link in the suspension. It uses a reversed A-arm at the back, uh, wide based at the wheel end, connecting to this upright. The L-section Dunlop was in fact developed for sale in 1963. This car being a 1960 ran a 515 R5 tire which is about that wide if you can imagine. My company Vintage Tires Limited is the North American distributor of Dunlop racing tires but we're now moving in uh, well and truly into contemporary race tires. The F70 cars are now leaving the hot pits for their qualifying session. Over here is the transporter of Lance Smith. He spliced together two rider trucks to make this transporter and we think he did a great job on it. Up front he's built living quarters in the first half of the truck. Let's take a look inside where he carries the car. He's got the area that holds the car all beefy with heavy duty aluminum ramps to load, tire racks overhead. That's a wonderful rig. Next to Lance, we see that Peter Gates has the body off the Swift DB2. The front suspension is a rocker arm with inboard shocks and springs that are fully adjustable. It's got aluminum, alloy, uprights, and uh, LD65 brake calibers. These hoses that you see are for brake cooling. The engine is a two liter Ford with a Weber carburetor. It's a four cylinder motor. The gearbox is a Hewlin Mark 9. It's got four forward speeds and one reverse. It's got uh, constant velocity CV joints, axles out to the rear, A-arms. Dale Phelan in the white 67 Camaro leads the group six cars off the false grid. After Dale comes the Camaro of Jim Bradley, the Corvette of Michael Donahue, the Camaro of Pat Ryan, the Camaro of Ed Jensen, the Jag XKE of Robert Abert and the Chevrolet Corvette of Dick Mooney. at timing and scoring for the start of the Group 8 race. These folks do a great job. They produce all the time sheets and time all the cars as they cross the start finish line. We've never seen time sheets prepared so quickly and so accurately. Every time a car crosses the start finish line, the AMB electronic scoring system makes a beep. Next to timing and scoring, we see Bert Levy calling the race. Uh, you folks at the top of the uh, roller coaster, 
exciting race in which we do some very, very good drivers in cars that we enjoy doing different things. We're now at the Saturday evening SVRA Awards Banquet sponsored by Phelan Motorsports and we just got through with a great dinner. The awards presentations are just underway. Master of Ceremonies Bob Williams has just introduced Jack Worley who's announced that Ed Seeley from Iowa who drives a Triumph GT6 and Triumph Spitfire has won the prestigious Bubba Award for 2001. It's now Sunday morning, feature day at VIR, and we've come down to the gas pumps to get stocked up for the day. There's a modern self-serve race gas facility at VIR, and they sell competition 110 leaded, super stock 114 leaded, and also two grades of unleaded. Over here at GMT Racing, we find the proprietor of the shop, J.R. Mitchell. He's working over the car of Bob Baker. Big fleet of cars under the awning today. Pretty impressive. We're now up on the false grid for the Sunday morning warm-ups for groups one and three. This is the last opportunity for these drivers to get some practice before the feature races this afternoon. These are the group five and seven cars going out for their Sunday morning warm-ups. This is our race group. But we're going to stand pat. We're ready for the feature race. After the morning warm-ups, it was time for the Sunday feature races. First up is the all-Formula Ford feature race. Up front, there was a race-long battle between Dean Baker in the Caldwell and Dean Tank in the Titan Mark VI Formula Ford. Just behind was a tight bunch of cars led by Frank Hammond in a Titan Mark VI and Jack Melvin in a Royal RP16. Over at Left Hook, we found Bob Harrington photographing the action. He runs R. Harrington Photography, and in our opinion, he's the best motorsports photographer in the world. Next up was the Formula 2, Formula B, and Formula Super V feature race. The action was hot. We got up to the false grid as the cars were leaving for the afternoon Formula Atlantic feature race. Dave Handy in the orange and white Sasco Sports Rolt RT1 came from second on the grid to win the race. It was then time for our feature race. We got in the car and headed up to the false grid. As we leave the grid, we see grid marshals Sandy Collins and Wes Clapp. They did a great job all weekend. As we approach the VIR bridge on our pace lap, we see that the pace car is leading the field up through the north course cutoff. That's to save time on the pace lap. For some events and for some test days, VIR can be divided into two courses, a north course and a south course. The north course cutoff joins the main track just above the roller coaster. So the north course goes from the start finish line through turn one, NASCAR bend, left hook, under the VIR bridge, up the north course cutoff, down through the roller coaster, and out through hog pen. As we approach the start finish line, we're concentrating on having the car in the right gear and getting ready for the start. The cars look well lined up. I think we'll get a start this time.
Near the end of the race, we're running in 10th place out of the 25 cars in our group that started the weekend. Many in the group have broken and they're going to fail to finish. We're now starting to get lapped by the leaders. Peter Gullick in the Chevron B23 blows by us on the back straight. And that's the way the race ended. The car ran great. We finished in 10th place and had a lot of fun. After our race, we got out of the car, changed our clothes, and rushed over to NASCAR Bend to watch the start of the Monoposto Racing F70 feature race. The action was hot. We spent the rest of the afternoon breaking camp, and it was almost dark when we loaded the Lola T492 into the trailer. We were almost out of daylight when we loaded up the last of our tools and equipment. After that, it was time to say goodbye to our friends. We'll see you guys at Savannah, huh? Okay. You got some jambalaya cooking in the back there, or what? Yep. <laughs> As we leave the track and head home, we reflect on how much fun we had this weekend and look forward to next season. That's it for this week at Vintage Garage. I hope you enjoyed the trip to VIR. I know we did. Next week, it's back to work in the shop. Over the past couple of years, we've been accumulating parts for our Titan Mark IX Formula Ford. That's the car that we're going to restore next season on Vintage Garage. We finished the pre-assembly on the car. Next week, we'll start stripping the car down and getting it ready for the restoration. We'll pull the motor out of the car. We'll remove all the suspension links and everything that needs to be nickel plated and get the chassis ready for painting. So we have a real full show next week. Please stop back. Until next week, thanks for coming. Keep the shiny side up. We'll see you in a week. If you'd like more information about any of the projects we've worked on today, please visit our website at www.vintagegarage.com. There's a link to our email address on the website. Please email us. We'd like to hear from you. Till next time, keep the shiny side up. Thanks for coming. See you next week. <laughs>